Carolina, Clifton, Spartanburg, Gaffney, Columbia, Spartanburg, Den wherever mo the majority of the black locals that we found were all in your area. Well, I, I, I don't know what the problem was, but I, uh, I know that uh, I've heard it talked a little bit. They didn't want to tell those black people they couldn't take them in. And uh, they, <laughs> because there's nothing we could do with them for a long time. And uh, so they wanted in so bad, I said, well, we'll give them a charter. So we didn't, they didn't pay anything. We just set them up a charter and, and put them in there and uh, I think for safekeeping, we'll come back six months or a year. Now I guess it's been 10 years. Probably some of them still got a local. And it's, uh, they haven't really got strong enough to take them in. The white local might not take them. You know, this is a, down south is a little different. They, uh, and you got a problem there. Um, so the, uh, it is so clear to me that if you want to take care, don't want to hurt their feelings, sign them up, give them a union, and you'll come back and see them uh, later when they get the other group organized, because you can't negotiate with a company for six people. You got 1,800 1, or 3,000 white people there. Now, do you think that the company would have, did, was, it, was it ever made known to the, to the company that, that, that you'd organized a separate local? No, company? we didn't let anybody know. We didn't tell anybody who was organized. Could you tell me that again? We never did tell anybody who we had organized. Unless it come up, and we said, oh, we've been there. We had them, we went there night. But uh, we didn't pub. Of course, we know we were putting this all out. There's a name where they have local unions and have charters. There's all, well, all pretty well known um, where we had local unions. Um, and we, uh, we did publish where they were, but uh, it was for our own information and our membership. No, but do you, did the white, did the other, did the other white locals know that you organized, that, that the black workers know. had a charter? Uh, I'm sure some, that they did. Could you include my question in your answer? I don't want to get in this black and white. Okay. Okay. The only reason I'm, I'm asking is because we were so excited, literally, when we found out that there were these black locals because we had heard that the blacks weren't involved. And then we couldn't find anyone who could tell us, black or white, we couldn't find anyone who could tell us. We're not coming at it from a source of antagonism. Yeah. Well, the only, only excuse that I, that I can think of, uh, that we use is uh, we can't do anything from them for for them now because we are on this white. And uh, but if you want in, we'll give you a charter. And it cleared them up. They don't, don't won't be bothering you for a while. I mean that's uh, I wouldn't put that on the air, but uh, that's what it is actually. They they're just holding. Uh, they had meetings? So they had, they had if they meetings? want to have a meeting, they had a meeting. They had a charter. And if they ask an organizer if he, uh, they wanted somebody to ask, answer questions for him and stuff, we'd send somebody down there with them that knew. Yeah, they, uh, we didn't keep anything back from it. We wasn't hiding. Uh, we wasn't hiding their names. Because when they, they publish, that they had a local. 
Now, when it came time to the strike, were these black workers out in public and out in front? Include my question. I don't know. I, I tell you. Um, I don't, they, they were for it, for the strike. Now, I don't, but I don't think they took them on any kind of a, a journey around. When they went from local to local, get all everybody out. Could you re could you re repeat that for me again? But mention the the, the black workers in there, if you could. Because see, I've never seen any pictures of black workers during the strike. I've never. I never have, and they had they haven't been asked. I guess. I, that's the only thing I can say. Um. And there's no, what could they do? Except stir up black and white uh, issues. And God, that's, that hasn't been solved yet. We, <laughs> and I guess it'll be a long time to get, all, to, to get that. But we're in a lot better shape about white and black mix it now and we have been. So we can keep it quiet, you know, <laughs> keep anybody doing it ourselves or stirring it up. We'll be better off. So during the strike when all the other, well, lots of workers were going public, the black workers maybe stayed back? Well, I'm not sure. Let me, let me, let's, let's let this clip go in. Okay. You know, now in Spartanburg, your area, most of the mills closed down. Is that right? Uh, they are all closed. I think it's a list on that. Yeah, I think it all. Um, they might have been, uh, there's a few that wasn't uh, completed. Everybody walked out of the plant. I mean, there's several. I can't name them, but uh, we had a few mills that didn't walk out. You could, okay, you could speak in broad terms. That's, you don't even have to be that specific. That's that's fine. If you could just mention, well, during the general strike in my area, most of the mills closed down. A couple didn't. Just to give us a, a sense. Well, I really don't know whether they all came out or not. But I, I, I have a feeling that the, some didn't come out. Now, that question, I wouldn't, uh, uh, I can't answer that. Okay. Now, but now, your area had the flying squadron was very, uh, you, I mean, you told me that your role during that period of time was almost like a communications person. You were giving out information. Is that right? Well, all the organizers were. We were all in the same same thing. Yeah, and we were just trying to keep them straight. Trying to... Because um, they don't, you know, they got a, it's a new group, got a union. They don't know what to do with it. And uh, they... Um, so all one plant said we're going, we're going to go to fly, we're going to shut them all down. And they started out, and the LA all came out. I don't think they had any disturbance at any plant. They all came out, or most of them. Uh, And I'm not sure whether that helped or harmed us, you know, as far as the organization is concerned. What, what do you mean? What? Oh, excuse the me. union didn't, didn't order them to do it. When you when you say something helped or harmed you, what are you referring to? Well, when they had the general strike, I mean, the, the flying squadrons shut down all the plants around. Uh, I'm not sure that that helped 
uh, or how much it harmed us. I don't know. Uh, but it certainly, it was an unorganized start. It was an organization. And this group started out misplanned, and uh, they went to another one, and another group went, and it was just like, it built like wildfire. And, uh, and I know the International didn't have anything to do with it. And I, know, <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with it or any of the organizers. Uh, well, they might, I think maybe some of them, were, oh, okay, all right, maybe they went along too. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't. Um, but it's, it was, uh, times is tough. Work is hard and once in a while, there's some people's got to express themselves, and they got to get out and you know do something. So that did them a lot of good. Uh, feeling, I think. Uh, so, uh, well, give me a hard question now. <laughs> And down south, they haven't got uh, used to black and white yet. So, uh, uh, and you know that. Uh, so that just happened to run into something like that. But, you know, it's the reason because we know that, that that's why we were so interested in the fact that there were some black locals because it meant that this was a time when blacks and whites were working together in some way. Well, I think as, uh, they wanted in the union and we said, okay, you can come. Now, I, I, I don't know the policy of the International Union back then. Uh, and I think, because it's the way it happened, that somebody said, well, we'll give you a charter. And uh, uh, you've got a union. Give them a union card. Now, to do that, the international had to know about it. They had to know about it. So they uh, must have been in on it. They, uh, I don't, uh, I never did hear any repercussions in any of the mills, any great, any great uh, rec uh, uh, about that. So um, I don't think it hurt much. Do you view the fact that there was some relationship between black workers and white workers, even in that way, that that was a, do you view that as that was a moment of opening or was a progressive moment or something to build on? No. Could you I didn't give any thought that? about that. We put those in, we give them the charter and local and said, we'll see you later. No, we had no motive. We were just trying to do something that they wanted to do is to get in the union. And we had no place that they could get in the union and be helpful. Because it's a small group, you gotta use it in that group. And uh, and you've got that out, got the bunch of people uh, satisfied. So there's a lot more to do when you say that we gotta organize everybody, get them in the union. Uh, that's easy said. But doing it is a different thing, and you run into all kind of problems. How do you think the stuff would be? I mean, wh how what what did you hope that strike was going to uh, attain? How do you th or how do you think the South would be different if that the strike of 1934 had been successful? Oh, it would have been a lot different. 
Could yeah. you include my question in your answer? How would yeah. the South be different today or the last 50 years if the strike had been successful? Um, well, then uh, we'd have more companies organized, more unionized plants. Uh, yeah, that's the more you do, the more you. So um, I didn't. I don't think it hurt us the union. Um, but uh, it didn't do a hell of a lot of good either. It did for a day or two, you know. We could it closed them down, you know. For the, uh, but uh, in the long run, it didn't do the union any good. Did it do the people any good? Well, it. Um, I, but the only thing it does make them that they were organized, you know, and they can do something or other. They did it, but uh, I, I don't think it. I don't think it helped. I would. I wouldn't say. And this idea that that some of us have had this actually, Lori and myself, when we found this list of um, black locals, and these, mm -hmm. these are not just in. South Carolina. When we when we found this list of black locals, these are not just South Carolina, these are all over. We got a feeling that there was something, you know, that maybe there was some movement between blacks or whites in some way maybe almost like a precursor to the civil rights movement mm, in some way. No. Do you agree with me? No. no. Could you read those out loud? Well, yeah, I know all of these places. Uh, uh, Now, only so we've had uh, meetings with the organizers, international does. Uh, if they had been any uh, means that they were trying to organize the black, every organizer would have been notified. And uh, no, the International didn't say anything about this. In fact, the organizer sent a, uh, for certification that he wanted a charter. And they sent him a charter. And he, he presented it to the local union. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you taping that? So, so what are you saying? So are you saying that... What am I saying? Yeah. That nobody knew, really knew about this, or they knew about this? Um, well, everybody knows about it, but it wasn't an issue. They, uh, nobody set out to organize blacks in the textile. But if they come and say, we want in, um, what should you say? No, we can't take you. Or we'll take you later, him. I'll make you a union member. And uh, and then they'd uh, get him in. But I didn't even intend to get in there. I didn't know that camera was running. <laughs> well, it's 
it's you've clarified something that we've never understood. well as long as you clarify in your mind because i don't know about anybody else that's ever ever thought about it that well why did we pick, take in this six why did we do this and uh i, I I think it was clear with the union what what was being done. It was for the future. Huh? It was for the future. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, you had high hopes for the future, didn't you? Well, when I became an organizer, it did. Because when I could take a a job. I, I don't. Uh, I want to do the the um, best I can for them. And uh, and I mean I worked toward that end, uh, and I think everybody else did. Um, All right, what's uh Okay. Um I um I just would if you could just just talk about um just the this a little bit more about the strike in your area and the end of the strike and then I think we would be done. Now, when you talk about my area, we had two or three organizers or four in this area too. Um, like Furman Garrett, John Pollard, um, uh, whenever where they had a, the mill, they had an organizer. But they, uh, we helped each other out at times. You know, organizers say, I want a, a couple, two or three guys, organizers go down and help him out something other. That's only in uh, the area that we're in. That's where you get that area. If uh, they needed, John needed something in Spartanburg, which sometimes he did. Well, we went down and helped John. The other organizers in here, instead of bringing them out of New York and all around, um, it was just that. You know, I'm. Um, it seems like Spartanburg was just a very strong union town, wasn't it? And you told me before that one of the reasons why it was strong was because other unions helped out the textile workers. You mentioned the IBEW. Well, the the carpenters and uh, the other other crafts, the union. Yeah, we had. Uh, they helped us. Could you, no. could you just describe that? Because that's very important. I mean, you weren't organizing in a vacuum. You were part of something that was bigger. Well, that's right. That's the way to answer that. Could you, could you, could you include my, my question or my own answer in your answer? Um, well, we're getting into shady ground now. Really? Yeah. Uh, I don't, uh, the other crafts helped the unions, each one. And I don't want to be coming out here way years later and saying that this is the way they do the things. Uh, I'm not, uh, I've been out of it for a long time. Um. Uh, However, I've known what's been going on. See, I spent 40 years in the, with the government doing this, but not this. I was just settling some stuff. Well, after the strike, why don't you t tell me what, how you think that, in terms of the strike and the end of the strike, how do you think that the community responded and what happened to most of the folks that you had organized and yourself? Well, nobody wins after a strike. Uh, you might have got what you start out to be settled, most likely less than what you wanted to do. 
And uh, you pay the pretty strong price. You take 1,000 people, take them out 10 days. The wages they lost, hell, they couldn't, they're going to recuperate that in years and years. But specifically to the general strike. Wait a minute, this thing's still on, isn't it? You don't want to record this? Well, I mean, I don't, this is not uh, what went on in the 30s. Well, I'm, I'm asking you specifically the 34 right now, the general textile strike in 34. After that strike, I'm just wondering if you could just speak to me about that, the end of that strike. Well, uh, that strike, I think uh, a lot of people learned a lot of things. That they bit off, the union bit off, bit off more than they could handle. And they didn't get any really results out of it. And they lost a lot of time. So it, it wasn't to the union's interest to have that flying squadron or going around and shutting down another plant. That didn't mean anything. That disrupted the th more than anything. The real movement. It, uh, it might have affected a few high-tempered uh, guys in the plant, you know. Yeah, that's it, you know, but... Uh, Hell, they're not solid. <laughs> uh, what had you hoped to, to gain from that period of time? Do you remember your uh, feelings at the time? And you must have had some very strong feelings. Well, I thought that we were making more progress than we were did. Um... There was another strike that had set us back, nationwide strike. I, that set us back a long way. Um, and... Uh, How did the nationwide strike set you back a long way? Could you tell me that? Set us back. How? Could you say the nationwide strike and then explain that to me? Well, we uh, set us back is that we, we lost stuff. It hurt. And it didn't make people go into the union. We got a lot of people out of the union with that strike. And I say it uh, detrimental. Some of the places never did open up after the strike. A lot of places went out of business. So, so uh, that's what I mean. Financially, it is bad. In retrospect, do you think that um, the generals, that, the, that it was a mistake? No. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that about any. That is a mistake. Uh, there's too many ifs and ands about the uh, uh, you've, uh, but if they, uh, a lot of places they've had strikes. Shouldn't have had some, some high tempered guy in there and pulled the strike, said, let's strike, and they walked out, right, the union knowing it, I mean, the international knowing anything about it. And they were out of probably, go, stayed out about a week, and the international got in there and got them back to work. Now, they didn't win anything. Um... So there's been a lot of mistakes made, and this, and uh, it's so big. The organization is so big, and you got so many people in it. 
is you're going to make other mistakes. And, uh, but I think it sometime he'll get it. That'll do it. Well, I think he did it. And I think that's a lovely way to end. I think they will get it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they do. <laughs> this is room tone. They're going to need it. Oh, that's on. End of room tone.